Whether you have a small child napping, a family member who works odd hours, or cranky neighbours, one of the most common questions about any canine breed is how much they bark. Today, that's exactly what we're going to find out about the Doberman, so let's get going. Welcome back to the Doberman channel. This is your first time here. My name's Hattie. I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Doberman and then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise the perfect Doberman. So if you're a lifelong Doberman lover, you're thinking about getting one and you've just started your journey with your new Doberman, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Doberman video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll find out how much of a bark of this powerful breed is and how that could impact your life. First off, let me just say that while there are some breeds who have a reputation for barking a lot to almost never, every individual is different. Not every Chihuahua barks their head off all day and not every Bernese Mountain Dog is silent. The individual's confidence level in you as their canine leader and their personality are huge factors in how much your canine could bark and in what situations. If you choose your new canine companion from a breeder, you might get a better sense of how much they are likely to bark based on their parents and previous litters, but again, each canine is an individual. Now, let's find out what kind of barker a Doberman typically is. We'll look at the breed's history first, since their original roles play an important role in a breed's tendency to bark. The Doberman Pinscher was a working dog, originally bred by a German tax collector in 1870, who also managed the town dog pound. It is believed that herding and cattle dogs are the foundation of the original Doberman breed, and the dog's graceful appearance that we recognise today was refined through the Manchester Terrier and Greyhound additions to the bloodline. There is no relation to the miniature pincher, although they are strikingly similar. They have excelled in protection work since their development and continue that role today. The breed was quickly recognised as an impressive all-round working dog and became popular in the US and the rest of Europe. The breed was used heavily by the Nazis because of their courage and drive, which caused love for the breed to drop until about a decade after the war. Today, the breed is rarely associated with the Nazi party and they are renowned the world over for their superior military and service work, as well as loyal family guard dogs. They are a muscular and powerful breed that still makes an impressive deterrent today, but has a mellow enough temperament to do well as part of the family. It is critical that they see you as their canine leader that they trust to keep them and their family safe, since some people think the breed is aggressive given their success in police and military work. Their high energy level means that they are easily excited, and most canines will bark or vocalise when excited, so it's easy to see how people can get this impression. Which brings us to the next determinant in their tendency to bark, their protection instincts. Another important factor to consider is a breed's tendency toward being a watch versus guard dog when determining how much a breed is likely to bark. Since the Doberman is an excellent guard dog, you should know that they have a serious bark that is as intimidating as their size. This doesn't mean that they'll bark at every shadow or person they see, but they are likely to bark at someone or another animal approaching the property. They aren't a great fit for apartment or town home living, since they will hear other voices through the walls that could trigger their guarding instincts. The good news is that the Doberman can be easily trained to accept all sorts of sounds and activity, and respect a hush command. Just know that it is their instinct to guard their family and they hear better than we do, so you may not hear a couple next door fighting in low tones, but your Doberman will. This is part of why they aren't a great fit for close living spaces, but they are a very adaptable breed. So long as they see you as their canine leader, they'll likely follow your lead if you react or don't react to a situation they assume you're aware of. Overall, you'll find that most Dobermans can be a bit on the vocal side because of their high energy. When excited and playing, they are likely to have a higher pitch and sharper bark. When they see a potential threat or someone knocks on the door is when you'll hear a deeper tone bark and growl that means business. This could be problematic if you share walls with your neighbours in an apartment or town home. Most Doberman families find the sharp barks, play growls and other vocalisations a charming quirk of the breed and know they can just as easily be trained to speak on command as they can to hush on command. This is a truly wonderful breed for the calm, consistent canine leader that sets clear boundaries when it comes to vocalisations in everyday life. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if so make sure you hit that like button, get involved in the comment section below and don't forget that if you're new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Doberman videos coming here every week so I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Doberman Show.